Welcome to episode 10 of Truth Seekers. I am your host, Brian Radzen, of course. I've uh, been thinking about how to introduce myself at the beginning of these things, but, you know, everybody will find their shtick, I'll find my shtick. You know, I found a few things to say, but episode 10, this is a good thing, double digits. Hope to one day make it to triple digits and beyond, but this is a good starting point. I've gotten some comments so far, a few, and uh, all helpful, productive, and, or should I say constructive, um, but I would love to spread the message to a lot more people, so any all out there uh, who have friends that need to, that need something to, uh, you know, bring them up or make them think, this is, hope this is uh, your choice, so. Let's get at it. So today, I want to talk about one of my favorite movies of all time, The Phantom Tollbooth. Um, the book was written by a man named Norton Juster, uh, I believe published in the late 60s sometime. I'm not sure the exact year. Um, but the book, which, or, you know, the book, which uh, eventually turned into a movie, which was made in the early 70s, so not too recent um, about the book was also, you know, like I said, it's one of my favorite movies. Book was great. Movie is still one of my favorite movies because um, not only because it was made in the early 70s when, you know, hand-drawn animation was still a thing and you could tell stuff was hand-drawn. The cartoons, they looked a little bit different, a little more real. I mean, the CGI stuff nowadays is cool, but it, it takes away something from the artist. You know, they used to sit for hours at storyboards. Anyway, so the movie, it starts off real um, as far as non-animated. Uh, basically, the boy who is bored doesn't see any meaning in life. Now, one of the reasons I love this movie and the book and everything... It's because of all the metaphor in it. Um, I like to think that I put a fair amount of metaphor in my writing, and therefore, whenever I see a physical representation of it, I certainly, uh, you know, jump at the chance to see it and like it and all of that stuff. So, this is one of those films that does that. Anyways, boy sitting in his room, bored, uh, magic box flies in the window and lands and he's like what the hell's going on he's on the hold on the hold with his uh, little buddy both bored nothing to do kind of feeling like in the doldrums there's no point to life and then this uh, box comes in and it's a toll booth so to speak and he rides it on into a magical land now there's been lots of obviously lots of cartoons made it with uh, characters who go off to magical lands, but this one in particular I've, I really think is special for a lot of reasons. So one of them is this movie was done with such, uh, is certainly funny for kids. A uh, lot of material, like I said, the metaphor for adults, um, and songs, all that kind of stuff. But I want to talk about a few of the metaphors in it because I feel like it gives you a real picture of, you know, kind of what we go through in life. So, several scenes, I'm just going to pick some random scenes because I um, can't remember the exact, you know, frame-by-frame storyline or anything. But, uh, so, many metaphors give you the basic gist. This magical world has uh, is in chaos, is at war. These two warring kingdoms, one is letters and one is numbers, they're fighting each other to uh, determine what's more important. And the reason they're fighting is because the princesses of rhyme and reason are gone. So basically there's chaos because there's no rhyme or reason. First off, get that. So then, you know, he, this boy Milo sets off on a magical quest through this land to try to rescue these, uh, the princesses of rhyme and reason. So, one thing that I always thought was cool, uh, 
as he's going along before he kind of gets to the kingdoms he goes to different you know gets different people's advice um and it's you know it's great flick but um the doldrums all found ourselves in the doldrums before where we can't think we can't we don't want to do anything we're not like giving up but kind of giving up kind of satisfied in the swampiness of not giving a shit i guess that's really what it is not caring get stuck in the doldrums you start getting a depressed you start getting satisfied with that level and anything that brings you out even if it's good uh can be looked down upon so how do you get out of the doldrums by thinking the very opposite of what got you in there good thoughts productive thoughts any thoughts and keep those going and you will soon find yourself out of the doldrums as which they did in the movie <laughs> it's a lot finally finds the kingdom these two warring kingdoms not only uh are they in the desert but um it it reminds people of some of the roots of mathematics and language are rooted in some of the uh ancient arabic or should I say ancient Egyptian, ancient Bedouin, I'm not sure exactly uh, the tribes, but basically, you know, ancient Arabs, for lack of a better phrase. Um, were all basically the roots of language and old mathematics. The two kingdoms have obviously Arab names, Aziz and something else. I can't remember right now. But they fight each other. They're brothers. And like I, like I said, again, the metaphors is just, it, it, it's pure gold. The, 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 uh, the kingdom with the letters. They eat the letters. They go to the kingdom. They get a special meal. Whatever they can imagine is put in front of them. So while all the uh, his helpers and all Milo's helpers are eating their most favorite meals in the world, he gets a explanation of, I'm sorry, but can I ask a question, blah, blah, blah. A few sentences that he speaks, and that's, he has to eat his words. Now, when he said, oh, I wanted something else, one of the other people said, you must have, you should pick more delicious words. Which, has obviously some comic relief in that scene, but it's true because if we want our words to have more meaning, we have to mean them. We have to actually mean them. I mean, that's the root of a lot of problems, right? Just people doing stuff that they don't mean or are trying to be something they're not or are trying to be another picture of some thing that somebody had an idea of them 20 years ago down the road and now they're no longer you know that person but anyway back to the movie <laughs> so gets through the letters goes into the numbers same kind of thing ancient stuff it's really powerful um just so chalked with metaphor the when he leaves the kingdom of the letters, the king is so happy that he, uh, you know, kind of brought him some peace and was going to go talk to his brother, the number king, that he gives him a bag. Now, this bag contains every word that can be used in the possible English language. He said, this will get you out of trouble. He said, this will bring you up, will make you, help you achieve your wildest dreams. I'm thinking it's language that's the metaphor language words is funny language it means everything and means nothing at the same time how many times have you said words don't how many times have you heard that words don't mean anything or said that words don't mean anything well i have a lot of times they mean nothing and everything at the same time how is that even a thing 
language is how we convey how we feel, but at the same time, we can't get caught up on words because sometimes the actions are more detailed and more uh, meaningful than the words. Pictures worth a thousand words, for instance. So, you know, any words you can imagine. Now, after he goes to the number king, does whatever he does, comes out the other side, and the number king is very happy with him, too, that they're all going to rescue the uh, princesses of rhyme and reason in the sky to end chaos, as they say. Gives him a pencil, which he says has a magic eraser and a magic, it's a magic pencil. It can write any number on earth, any number out there, any number that you will need, any number that you could conceive of. It's just a pencil. It's just a regular, regular pencil. The meaning there, of course, is that you, the person, we, the person, me, you, everyone out there in their own way, can create these words, can create whatever they want. They can create anything that their heart imagines, everything that their heart imagines. It's a beautiful world. It's, it's everything that we hope it to be. We just have to make it so. So So after young Milo makes it out of the letter kingdom and the number kingdom and is firmly on his uh, upward trajectory towards the castle in the sky where the princesses of rhyme and reason are being held, they have to get by all these they have to get by all these monsters. Little ones, big ones. There's meanings to each and every one of these. I just can't for the life of me remember them right now. But the main point is right near the end. Right after they beat all these little monsters along the way that weren't what they thought they were. You know, made themselves out to be a lot worse than they were. Right before they're about to get to the path of the castle, all these monsters kind of congeal or ameliorate or that's not the right word but come you know kind of can 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 you know come together in one big blob this giant giant monster of all the fear of all the negativity it's ignorance and what is the true what is the solution to ignorance this big old giant monster, no matter how big and how angry and how violent it looks like it's going to get. What is the answer to that? Truth. Milo shoots this little tiny weapon, hits the monster in the tongue or whatever, and it's truth. Truth beats out ignorance. And it will every time. Every time. We have a lot of ignorance going on along right now, and we need a lot of truth. One of the reasons why I wanted to do this episode, but uh, another reason was to try to remind you all out there how important truth is to all of us. Now, you know, I know we create our own realities, we create our own perceptions, we perceive what we want to perceive, especially through whatever we've experienced in life. But there's something out there that's a black and white, humanistic, binds us all together truth. We're human. We uh, want to take care of ourselves our families. We want to leave some kind of positive mark on the world. We want to feel like we matter. You know, and I think that's, that's where a lot of people get stuck these days. I know I do. Sometimes we just feel like we don't matter. We get depressed. Now how, and, and the reason I'm bringing this up is, how universal feeling do you think that is? People feeling like they just, they don't matter. 
and whatever they say or do um, just digs them further into a hole um, where people all around them, above them, below them, to the sides, wherever everybody's gaining but not them. Or at least that's what they perceive, what they feel. Now, all they want is to matter. I think everybody out there, no matter what side of the spec, the political spectrum, the other spectrum, whatever spectrum, okay? There's a lot of spectrums out these days. Whatever side of the spectrum you're on, you know we all want to matter. We all want to be loved. We all want to matter. And so when there's a group of people that's been standing up, trying to stand up for their rights, like this country was literally founded on, they went from wanting equality to being noticed, tolerated. Now they want to matter. So if someone stands up and says Black Lives Matter, they're not saying that you don't matter. They're saying that they do. How many times have we told ourselves we matter? We want to matter. We do matter. We, we, we use it to come out of our depression and come through to the light. Yeah. We all matter. And it's none of our damn business if someone stands up and tries to fight for their rights trying to say that they matter when we know that we have done it a million times. We know we matter. They know they matter. Why can't we see that each other matters? Someone's not even asking for equality anymore. Someone's just asking that they matter. I mean, how low do they have to bring down their expectations? How low do they have to go before they get anything? Before the bottom of the barrel is scraped and there's nothing they can do? I don't know. I don't know. But to give some hope, I know that everything coming forward for us in life that old way of thinking that caught kept everybody down, the old, all the old culture war bullshit, it's all fading away. It's all fading away. All that generation is going to die off. And all that's going to be left is us, the newer generation. Well, there's a lot of good people from that generation too. But I think a lot in the new, they could care less about a lot of the culture war stuff. Yes, we're going to have disagreements on taxes and economics and things along those lines. And we may never agree. But most of the th most of the things that get, you know, for lack of a better phrase again, liberals and conservatives caught up all the moral stuff. If people would realize that all people have rights, all people matter, and if you're against that, you're going to lose. You know, if everybody realized that, they would stop putting up false, you know, false promises, false speeches, false talk. It comes back to truth. Truth wins out all. It's why it beat ignorance in the Phantom Toll Booth. It's why Milo goes back to his life after he defeats this monster through the whole animated part of the movie, because that all part's animated. Then when he comes back to his regular life, it's, you know, regular filming again. He's no longer bored. He wants to go out and enjoy life and enjoy the beauty and play with his friends and play games and kick a ball and, you know, do all the stuff a kid's supposed to do. Well, are we as adults, are we at the point where we realize that We must do the same thing. We must remember what life is really worth. 
We must always take pleasure in the simple things, but not get caught up on them. Don't hang on to little moments so long that it changes their meaning and inherently makes it bad. We can do this. Realize that metaphor is everywhere in our lives and it's there to help us. It's sometimes some of the signs and symbols that affect everything. So when we go through our daily routine, may we always may we always look at others like we look at ourselves. And if that look is bad, then that's where we start because it's the root of so much problems. We need to be able to look in the mirror, not like what we see, but love what we see and realize that that person staring back has the potential to achieve greatness. They just have to believe in themselves and know that that's something better is out there. Because it is. We just have to work for it. We all matter. We all want truth. We all want authenticity. And we don't want fakeness. We need to stop being okay with fakeness. And just live life like it was supposed to. Like the beauty of the world wants us to. We can achieve great things. And we will. We will come together. Once we realize we're the ones holding us back. Well, I love you all and we'll talk soon. Remember to like and share this video and hit the subscribe button. Links for all my social media, my website, and where to buy my books are in the description below. Love and gratitude will find a way. We just have to keep the conversations going. See you all soon.